Yo, what's good, Bills Mafia? Rev Rhodes here from the Buffalo Fanatics Network, and you are now tuned in to episode two of Rated Rev, where we go neck deep into all things Buffalo Bills. Yo, I have a jam-packed show for you today, and the passion meter is all the way up. You know how we do it. From week to week, we bring you that heat. So clear the tables. It's time to eat. Bills Mafia. Before we go any further into the show, I'm going to need you to smash that like button, comment, and share this to all of your social media platforms. And if by any chance you are not yet plugged into the Buffalo Fanatics Network, do me a favor. Subscribe to the channel and turn the bell notifications on. Alright? Now let's dig in. In case you were hiding under a rock, last week was the NFL Combine. Now while many of us, myself included, were glued to the TV watching these draft prospects put on an absolute clinic, head coach Sean McDermott dropped some golden nuggets in his presser that I believe gives us a glimpse into what he and Brandon Bean are thinking heading into the 2022 NFL season. And that's what we're going to discuss on today's show, resetting and rebranding the Buffalo Bills offense. So let's get into nugget number one by head coach Sean McDermott. Now, at his presser, when asked by Bills team reporter Matty Glab if he felt it was a challenge putting the new offensive staff together this offseason, Sean McDermott said the following, and I quote, Going through it gives you a chance to reset and rebrand and make things better. That's the right mindset, and that's the right approach. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't take anything Sean McDermott or Brandon Bean, for that matter, says for granted, which is why I find it so incredibly interesting and fascinating that he would use that phrase reset and rebrand to describe his mindset and approach regarding the Bills offense. Now, why do you think he would use that? Why do you think he feels as though there's a need to reset and rebrand the offense? I mean, because by all accounts, Last year's offense was pretty good, right? They were very successful. I mean, minus a few hiccups, but they got back on the track, and they were pretty, pretty good. In fact, they finished out the year fifth in total yards and yards per game, ninth in passing yards, third in scoring, and get this, sixth in rushing. So when you think about what he said, resetting and rebranding the offense, it almost doesn't really make sense, right? It makes you question his motives, why do you think that you need to reset the offense? What do you think? Huh? Mafia, tell me. What do you think he meant by resetting and rebranding the offense? Share your thoughts with me in the comments below, all right? Now, here's my take. It's no secret that Sean McDermott and Brian Dable didn't always see eye to eye when it came to the philosophy or even the function of the offense, right? I mean, McDermott said on several occasions throughout the year, that he wanted to see more balance out of the offense. Okay, right? Now, meanwhile, when asked by the media, uh, Brian Dable on occasion would kind of subtly shoot down the idea of balance, and I said that in finger quotes, by saying things like, oh, well, we'll do whatever it takes to win a game, and, and, or, or there are multiple ways to achieve balance. Now, McDermott wanted them to run the ball more. Right, especially against those cover two shells that they saw so often last year. Whereas Brian Dable wanted to let Allen air the ball out 40 times a game and also be the team's leading rusher. Okay, now while it allowed us to see the best of Allen, right, I mean, because we all loved it, it also put him in extreme danger. Sean McDermott and Brandon Bean had a front row seat watching Cam Newton get absolutely punished and pummeled in Carolina. Make no mistake about it. They want absolutely no part of that for their $200 million asset in Josh Allen. Now, yes, 
Yes, they love that Allen can take over games with his arms and his legs and he can go nuclear whenever he needs to. But their top priority is protecting Josh Allen. Even if that means protecting him from himself. So golden nugget number two. Enter new O-line head coach. I mean, not head coach, my bad. New O-line coach, Aaron Cromer. Now, when asked about the qualities of Cromer that he liked, Coach McDermott had this to say, and I quote, A big emphasis for us is protecting the quarterback. Making a big-time hire at that position was important for me so that those players are developing right away. Aaron has had a track record of developing players at that position. Now, listen at that. A big emphasis for us is protecting our quarterback. Now, once again, Sean McDermott and Brandon Bean are in sync, right? I mean, it's all about protecting Josh Allen. Now, what I find also interesting is how McDermott links protecting Josh to the big-time hire of Aaron Cromer. Why? Well, by his own words, it was important for him that the players on the offensive line are developing the right way. And Cromer has a track record of developing O-line talent. So how do you protect Josh Allen? Huh? How do you protect Josh Allen, even protecting him from himself? Well, number one, it starts with the guys up front who are actually getting paid to protect him. <laughs> okay, They need to solidify the offensive line however and whatever it takes, right? That offensive line needs to be solidified. Now, when you look at the 2021 season, the offensive line didn't really have a problem in pass protection. I mean, think about it. Josh Allen was only sacked 26 times the entire year, which ranked 28th in the NFL. So pass protection wasn't the problem. Yeah, I know they may have had some issues with the rookie Spencer Brown at times, but all in all, the offensive line did a pretty good job protecting Josh Allen in pass protection. But the problem was in run blocking. The problem was run blocking. Oh, yes, absolutely. Now, yes, I understand they finished sixth in rushing, right? But even though they finished sixth in rushing, those numbers are misleading. Let's take a look at it a little further. Devin Singletary, starting running back. His rushing stats from last year. 188 attempts, 870 yards rushing, which ranked 16th in the NFL. He averaged 4.6 yards per carry and ended with seven touchdowns. That's pretty good, right? That's, that's, that's not bad for Devin Singletary, especially when you think about kind of the struggles that the offense had, the offensive line had running the ball. For him to finish out the year with 870 yards, it's pretty good. But now let's look at Josh Allen because guess what? He had rushing stats too. 122 rushing attempts. 763 yards rushing. 6.3 yards per carry. And six rushing touchdowns. Now, Josh Allen, when you think about it, was, was a little over 100 yards away from finishing the year as the Buffalo Bills' leading rusher. Think about that. I mean, that, 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 that's insane to me, right? That's insane to me. Now, I understand Josh Allen is phenomenal. Josh Allen has a cannon out of this world, and he's got legs like a deer, right? He can run. He can extend plays. He can do all of that. That's what we love about Josh Allen. But for him... To almost be the leading rusher is a problem. And it's a problem that Sean McDermott notices. And it's a problem that I believe is going to fix. So what does this mean, guys? What does this mean? Does this signal the end of Air Allen in 22? <laughs> right? Is McDermott finally going to get the balanced offense He's been clamoring for all of these years. What do you think? I mean, I, it would pain me, right, not to see Air Allen anymore, right? 
I mean, because I absolutely love Josh Allen and what he does with his arms and his legs. He can take over a game, goes nuclear, he goes ham, he goes all of that. But what I believe is going to happen and what I believe we're going to see is a truly multiple offensive attack going forward. A finally, a true multiple offensive attack going forward. This is what Sean McDermott has been wanting for so long. Now let's look about let's look at the the Bills offensive personnel packages from last year just to kind of get an idea of whether or not they were balanced or multiple or not. Last year the Buffalo Bills ran 11 personnel, which is one running back, one tight end, and three wide receivers 70% of the time. And they ran 12 personnel, which is one running back, one tight end, I'm sorry, one running back, two tight ends, and two wide receivers, 8% of the time. 8% of the time. Guys, that is a huge discrepancy for a team that is trying to be multiple. Brian Dable came from a system in New, in New England where there were multiple, but for some reason when he got to the Buffalo Bills, he acted as if he had no idea how to develop an offense that was well-balanced. Allen averaged last year 38 pass attempts per game, 18 rushing attempts per game which includes Allen's runs, okay? So, so let, let me say that again. Allen averaged 38 pass attempts per game, okay? The offense only averaged 18 rush attempts per game, which includes Allen's runs. Now, if you take Allen's runs out of the equation, Devin Singletary himself only had 11 rushing attempts per game. What type of balance is that? It's no wonder Sean McDermott was pulling out every last bit of hair he had in his head as he was trying to answer questions about why his offense was struggling and, and the need to be more balanced. So this is what I anticipate happening next year, or this year actually going forward. I anticipate those rushing attempts by the running backs to increase. Now look, I know a lot of you guys out here in Bill's Mafia have a huge problem with running the ball. You think that, hey, man, we've got Josh Allen, Stephon Diggs, Gabe Davis, and the likes. Let Allen cook. Let him do his thing. Let him throw the ball 50 million times a game if he has to. Do not take the ball out of his hands. I get that. Trust me, I get that. But this is about protecting Josh Allen and protecting him from himself. And this is also about protecting the $200 million asset and investment that they have in him, right? You have to, you have to pull the reins back on a lot of these design runs and a lot of the demand on Allen to be Superman in all of these games. That's why I anticipate them scaling back a little bit. Those rushing attempts by the running backs, they have to increase because that's how you protect Josh. That's how you protect Josh. You don't have him running the ball all of the time, all of these design runs. Now, look, when, when, when the game is on the line and you need to get it first down, Josh, do what you got to do, right? Run the ball. Do what you got to do. But to have him in the year with over 700 yards rushing, almost leading the team in rushing, we cannot, and I repeat, we cannot have that going forward. So here are some potential moves that I see happening, okay? Now, we're going to increase the rushing attempts by the running backs, but here are some potential offensive line moves that I see happening next year. So keep your eye out. Potential move number one, John Feliciano, cut. That's it. Plain and simple. John Feliciano, he's getting cut. Daryl Williams, he can get cut too. Now, I would be opposed to Daryl Williams maybe taking a, a, a restructured deal, okay? But you have to also think about Aaron Cromer and whether or not he wants to add his guys, and we're going to get into that later. So for, for argument's sake, let's just say they cut Daryl Williams as well, okay? Now, that leaves 
Ike Butker. What are you gonna do with him? He's coming off of a major injury. I like Ike Butker. Okay. I may not think that he's a starter, so to speak, but he's great depth. And Sean McDermott loves him and trusts him, which is why he was starting for so long. So I say they're gonna re-sign Ike. Okay. Now we have Ryan Bates. What are you gonna do about that? He's a restricted free agent. They're going to tender him. They're going to re-sign Ryan Bates. Sean McDermott did not want to do anything with Ryan Bates. He, didn't, he, he wanted to keep him on the shelf for a reason. He loves this guy. But he had to put him in the game, and he balled out. Ryan Bates is not going anywhere. Okay? Now, that brings me to Cody Ford, a polarizing figure on the offensive line. Now, I have been very critical of Cody Ford as an Oh, you fan, I've been on record as saying, look, I think Cody Ford is trash. But could I have overstepped? Could I have been trying to throw him out and throw him in the trash too soon? Is it possible that McDermott and his tinkering messed him up early in his career and then he got injured? And could it could also be that OG Bobby Johnson did not get the best out of Cody Ford. So I believe that Cody Ford is going to remain on this roster because when you think about to, uh, what Sean McDermott said in regards to Aaron Cromer, he respects him and he likes what he brings to the table because he has a history and a track record of, get this, developing offensive linemen. This is going to be about development. They have a lot invested into a lot of these offensive linemen on the team, and they are going to do everything they can to get these guys developed. That's why they brought in Aaron Cromer. He's the guy to develop guys, and he's going to have a special project by the name of Cody Ford. That is going to be Aaron Cromer's special project, to see if he can develop Cody Ford into the potential, maximize his potential. All right? Now, next of all, I think he's also going to add one more free agent addition, okay? And this free agent addition, I don't know if it's going to be a big signing or a small signing or a mid-year, I don't know. But I think this guy is going to be an Aaron Cromer guy, right? Whether or not it's somebody that he's worked with in the past, I don't know. But Aaron Cromer is going to have a lot to do with this guy, okay? So he's going to be an Aaron Cromer free agent signing. And then as you approach the draft, I do see them adding a developmental offensive lineman in the NFL draft. So we're talking about resetting and rebranding the Buffalo Bills offense in 2022. This is what I see, guys. This is what I see happening. They have to make some changes. Now, I don't think that they're going to make a whole bunch of wholesale changes to the offense, okay? But this year is all about resetting and rebranding to protect Josh Allen and keep defenses on their toes, right? Now, change can be a good thing. I respect what Brian Dable did for this offense and what, for, what he did for Josh Allen, but it's time for a change. We bring in Aaron Cromer, a very highly respected offensive line coach we bring in uh, and we we uh, uh, actually um, hire from within ken dorsey a first time offensive coordinator okay so we have to do things to not only protect josh but we got to protect him as well as a first time offensive coordinator not to mention joe brady coming alongside to be the quarterback's coach okay so there's going to be some changes taking place but change is good all right change is good and, could, and it could be a good thing I'm excited and thrilled as all get out about the direction of this team. And I am glad to know that we finally, finally have a head coach and a, and a GM in a front office who values the importance of a fresh perspective. Oh my gosh, how long has that been missing in this front office? A fresh perspective. McDermott loves it. He loves the youth movement um, um, in his coaching staff. He respects a lot of these guys who are coming from the college ranks because he sees how the NFL and the landscape of the NFL is changing, right? And he needs a fresh perspective and he respects it. There's going to be some things happening that I am excited about as we move forward. Well, that's all I have for episode two of Rated Rev. But before I go, I want to share some final words with you. 
Division builds walls, but love and unity builds bridges. Walls of division are being built all around us. And like, like wheat from the tares, we are being separated left from the right, rich from the poor, black from the white, men from women, etc. And sadly, much of it has spilled over into our beloved community that we call Bill's Mafia. Now, granted, I understand that we all have differences, as we should. However, our differences should unite us, not divide us. And I believe that our collective differences, if united by true love, creates a beautiful mosaic for all to see. So do me a favor, Bill's Mafia. Let's tear down the walls of division. Lock arms with your brothers and sisters in the spirit of unity and love and build bridges for a better today and a brighter tomorrow. This is Rev signing off. Until we meet again, grace and peace. God bless. And as always, go Bill.